Salam people, it's your boy Kalas Karim here. Karim for you lot who don't know. Born in Denmark, raised in West London. I'm 24. Yeah. Wanna get a cut on the road, better gonna ask about credit. credit. Probably get 50 birds on the arm and they ain't gonna ask about credit. No. Good for it. Known in the whole hood for it. Yes. Send it with a brick and a cook for it. Oh, like yeah. a ass raw, just look on it. I got into boxing, I've said it once, I'm happy to say it again. I got into boxing around four or five years ago when I had a bad uh, football injury. I fractured my left, my ankle, got ligament damage on my left ankle, went down a bad path, a dark path, an unmotivated path. And one day I looked at myself in the mirror and just thought, it's time to change. So with the circumstances of having a fractured ankle, it wasn't easy getting back into running, getting back into football, training and gym. And somehow someone convinced me to step into the ring, step into a gym, throw my hands. And ever since then, I haven't looked back. In the beginning, it was all just, just training, just trying to stay motivated, trying to stay with in peace, trying to stay in peace in my head, battling my own demons. As everyone knows, they all got their own demons to battle. So, couldn't run, couldn't do anything, put the gloves on. Ever since I put the gloves on, I haven't taken them off ever since, and I don't plan to. So, I've had now, let's say, I'd say about six, seven competitive fights, but only, let's say, two, three of them I took seriously. Before, after my third or fourth fight, I then took boxing seriously because I see myself winning, and I'll, I'll go back and think, Karim, you weigh like 110 kilos. How are you winning these fights? How are you winning against people who are, far, who are faster, lighter, stronger? And yeah, that just gave me the motivation to keep pushing forward and keep, keep looking forward and not look back. As all of you guys know, Wicked and Bad Free was one of the biggest platforms I've ever fought in to this day. And I loved every second of it. I want to thank Bouncer. I want to thank Wicked and Bad for this opportunity. They're continuing to give me as much as the one before. The last fight did not go to plan, unfortunately, but that's okay because, inshallah, God has a plan. God knows, God, God, God knows what he has intended for me and I'm just going to be patient and just work my ways. But the last fight, I enjoyed it very much. It was a very good experience, something I will cherish, something I will hold in me forever, something I will never forget, regardless of the outcome. It's always something I will I'll cherish. No, he didn't surprise me. I just let myself down. He didn't surprise me at all. I knew he was going to come out jitty jitty, jittering, hopping and skipping, not throwing any shots like you guys saw. He didn't throw any punches. He hardly threw stuff. This time, I'm coming back bigger. I'm coming back stronger. I'm coming back tougher, faster. He's not going to know what hit him. I'm going to come like a full steam train at him. If I hit him, he's going through them ropes. If I miss, I'm going to fly through them ropes because of how fucking fast I'm going to come at this guy. He's not going to know what hit him. My name is Adam, I'm from London and I've been coaching for about four years now. So what led me to be a coach was that I was always good at it, but I never committed until life pushed me in that direction. And I ended up in this boxing gym and got offered a job, had some experience, and I just found out I was good at it and I kept get, getting better. And I just carried on with it and here I am. I found that Karim is slow to start. So from round one to three, he started to get his bearings, right? He started to get the distance, started managing the distance. So from round one, he just needed to get, get close enough or just manage the distance, know how far, how close, just exactly just how much, right? Once he got that down, started round two, he started, he started to let his hands go a little bit more. However, he was still a bit too cautious, plus pro boxers started to hold him a little bit. So every time he got close, you've had uh, pro boxer just like smothering him a little bit. Round three, that's when it started to pick up. I mean, there was a slip, I believe it was round three or four, but there was a slip there and it kind of threw his momentum off, but he was back on it. But it started to turn into a scrap and that's when the fitness started to show, where Karim, I found, was the fitter boxer. Karim, gonna win, hands down. Hands down, Karim's gonna win. Like, no question, no doubt. I have him knockout in the, or technical knockout from five, between five to seven. Say so TKO KO between five to seven. Yo, no one's up. making noise. Listen, listen, no one's making noise. I please. knocked you, yeah. knocked you, but I stumbled you. You were not right there. You, you would have been sleeping. You was like, you would have been sleeping, mum. You would have been sleeping. Come sleeping. get me, mum. Shout, man. Your eye was. Yeah. Your last fight was so shit. I didn't even bother watching. You're laughing, man. Shut up. It's not even on YouTube, people. Correct. It's not even on Correct. YouTube. Phone, but you want to take my. Let's go, bro.
Yo, chill, chill. Quality oh, girls, fuck sir. Hey, quality boys, well done. You know what? Big respect to both of you. Nah, you know, quality, I know quality. It got really, it got real emotional there, but the fact that you can shake hands after, yeah, and now we'll leave the rest to the ring. Yeah, Let's five weeks away for fight night, co-main event. Let's get it on. I haven't exchanged any comments with this joke, man. As a matter of fact, this guy, he unblocked me on Instagram and decided to follow me. You, you was making fun of me about me liking and supporting your videos and your posts. Why are you following me, big man? You ain't getting a follow back. You best unfollow me because otherwise you'll be staying there as a fan for years. Trust me, I am 100% training differently. I have not taken a rest. I've not taken a break. It has been Monday to Sunday. I thought I killed myself for the last camp. I am putting my body through the works this camp. I am non-stop aching. I am non-stop tired, but I non-stop keep going on. Remember that, non-stop. I am not stopping for anyone. I'm gonna steam through this camp, I'm gonna steam through this fight, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna focus on the next fight in the future, inshallah. For this fight, I feel like I'm in a different place mentally because I have a lot more to prove. I have a lot of naysayers and a lot of doubters to prove wrong because I didn't show my full potential. I, I could have done more, I should have done more, but it is what it is, we live and learn. But right now, I'm in a very confident frame of mind in my head. The last fight, I wasn't in a very good place mentally and I used the gym and I tried to use the gym to my best advantage to steam through the issues I had going on. But now, Alhamdulillah, they've been sorted, I've put them behind me and now all I've got to focus on is this fight. So yes, I am mentally prepared. My prediction is TKO. I don't even want to knock him out. I don't want to knock him out because at the end of the day, if I knock him out, people are going to say, oh, you just got the one punch. You've just got that power punch. So I'm going to school him. I'm going to show him the speed, the agility, the technique. He's not going to be ready for it. I'm going to see him in the late rounds. He wants to end it, uh, he wants to end it quick. I'm guessing he wants to end it quick because he knows he won't last long with me. So I know I'm happy to take it to the 10th round. I'm happy to take it to the 10th round and see it out. I don't mind. It's what I've been training for. I've been doing double the amount of rounds in the gym, people. I don't think you understand. Pro Boxer, you need to get yourself in the gym because you got yourself in the gym last time and it done you no good. So what more are you going to do that's going to benefit you? What more can you bring to the table that's going to put me under the ropes? Nothing. Nothing. Everybody knows it. I know it. The whole of Wicked and Bad Promotions know it. They're just, they're just keeping you along the ride, man. They're just, gonna, they're just gonna keep you along the ride, keep giving you bread come, bread come, till I kick you off the train, bro. And then that's my train. And I'm gonna get everything. No bread comes. You can keep them ones. I've thrown them off the train. I'm going for the glory in, the, in front. So, yeah, boom. Pro Boxer, be careful, bro. Make sure you sleep easy. Make sure you sleep well, because I know I'm in your mind. I know I'm in your nightmares, bro, because you're not gonna forget those shots that you took that night. I know they're in your memory for a long, long time. And guess what? I'm gonna refresh that memory for you September the 18th, my guy. I hate to say it, but bro, I'll give you the respect for showing up another time. But pff, be careful, my guy. Just sleep, just, just sleep well until the fight comes, and then you'll see what's coming. Yo, my people, good to see you. It's your boy Karim here. We're back in the West Kenya. You already know, we're here to do a little walk and tour about Wicked and Bad 4. Can't wait for it, can't wait for it. Come, let's go. Ah. Here, people, we've got a new little, new little, little, new little addition to the family. We, don't, we haven't named her yet. We may name her Chai. Lovely, lovely Akira has blessed us with a little baby into the family. As you can see, Akira is not too bothered now because obviously they're growing up, they're getting big. So she just goes and does her own thing and expects me to babysit now. I'm now like the single, the single dad of West Kent, raising puppies. Oh. It's a good day, man. It's a good day, man. Oh, oh. Had good sparring today. Lovely sparring. 
wasn't able to re record it, wasn't able to get no footage for you people, but that's okay. People, Wicked and Bad 4 is gonna be coming. 10 rounds with that pro boxer joke, man. Don't even know why people let this guy name himself pro boxer, for real. But it is what it is, man. As you can see, people, the West Ken is not looking too greenery. He's not looking too much of life. It's looking a bit dead and empty, but it's the life of the estate by day. By night, this place is popping. So going on to Wicked and Bad 3, let's say. Let's talk about the first fight. The first fight, as everybody knows, I hate to say it, I got robbed. I literally got robbed, broad daylight. They legally robbed me, I couldn't do nothing. I just had to hold my hands up high and just take it on the chin. But it is what it is. That last fight was only five rounds. This fight's about to be 10. People, you are not gonna want to miss this one. I can tell you now, it's gonna be a show that is gonna be the most entertaining fight of the night. Pro Boxer, you will end up on the floor, Pro Boxer. I don't know how, I don't care how, if you're sleeping, I don't care if you're on your knees, you will be regretting it. Trust me, look at me now, bro. You may think it's a joke right now, but once you step in that ring with me, you're gonna realize what the realness is to this boxing game. It was only five rounds, it wasn't so easy to warm up. I know we didn't have a crowd as scheduled, so it was a lot easier to deal with the Let's say the, the, the pressure, the adrenaline that was buzzing through us, all of the boxers, to be honest, I mean, everyone knows that stepping in the ring, it ain't easy, regardless of what level you are, you're at, what, what career you're trying to take down with boxing, white collar, amateur, pro boxing, everybody knows that once you step into the ring with you and your opponent, and the lights are on you and the cameras are rolling, it's a lot of pressure. But we're working on that now, every day we're building, we're growing stronger, we're working harder in the gym. I ain't never worked this hard in my life before. And boy, it's gonna show on September the 18th. Hello, my darling. Hello, come say hi to puppy. Say hi to baby. Say hi. This is Princess Chai, do you wanna give her a hug? Give her a hug, give her a big hug. Oh, yes. You better now? You happy? You wanna? Oh, we go park after my darling. Give her a kiss and she'll see you in the park later. Oh, give her a big kiss. Big kiss. We'll see you in the park later, okay? See you later. You too, my darling. You too, you too. Salam, Amor. But yeah, as we was talking, as we was going along, continuing on to the fight. It was five rounds, not much to it. Round one, I was a bit too slow. Took a bit of time to warm up to get comfortable with the lights, the noise, everyone screaming, everyone cheering. So round one was a bit of a quiet one for me. Round two and three and four, I would say. Yep, I started to feel lively. I started to get the spring in my step. I was catching him, stepping out. This joke man did not touch me once. No matter what highlights you people watch, whether you watch my highlights, whether you watch his highlights, you will see the truth that my man weren't touching nothing but thin air. He weren't even touching air, he weren't throwing nothing. All he was doing with all his success was hugging me, bear hugging me and trying to give me a little one-two slap. But other than that, I dominated the whole fight. He knows it, I know it, his team knows it. Everybody in the building that night knows. I don't even want to get too heated, I don't want to get too angry, you know, because it just, it rattles me to know that you can bully someone, you can dominate a fight for so long and somehow you can still get robbed of your victory that is deserved. But that's okay. I'm glad I was robbed of my victory because next time I'm not going to let no one rob my victory. Not the ref, not the judges, nobody. It's going to be between me and that pro boxer guy. I'm going to be in the ring 10 rounds. Let's see if you're ready, big boy, because I know I am. You can run and you can, you can sprint and you can roll all you like, my bro. You are not ready. What you train for is not gonna be compatible enough to match my skills. And I'm telling you this for real. I'm talking to you, Pro Boxer. I'm not talking to anyone right now. You come to me on September 
the 18th on a Sunday, yeah? It's a Sunday, remember what day it's gonna be, bro, because that's the day you're gonna humiliate yourself. You're gonna regret stepping into the ring with me. You may not have regretted it last time, but that's only five rounds. This time, it's 10 rounds, baby, 10 rounds. I don't think you understand what that means to you, bro. That is, I can't wait. I swear, just talking about it, just speaking about it, just, just visualizing it in my head. Oh, it's just making me just, it's, I'm getting goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Like, I can't, no, Akira, we're not going there today. Let's go, let's keep moving. We're not going to see no friends today. But yeah, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to train even like today. I'm, I'm glad you guys came to me today because I'm going to train even harder. Like you have given me the buzz today. Like this camera team today, thank you so much for pulling up on me today. Me and Akira, me and Chai. We haven't even named her yet, but I may name her Chai. But yeah, I'm going to, after you guys leave me here, I'm just going to go ham in the gym every day, every night. Everybody knows the work I put in. Everybody around me, I don't have a big circle, but my small circle knows that when I go hard, I'm going hard. When people ring my phone and I don't answer, they know what I'll go on. They know that I'm in the gym grinding, sweating, everything. Cuts, bruises, bangs, headaches, migraines, you name the lot, sleepless nights. But eventually, inshallah, it will, it will, it will come up one day. I will get everything coming to me, inshallah. Because hard work, man, people, honestly. I don't think you lot have seen hard work, man, like I have. Or like how I, how I push it out. To me, pushing out hard work is just like sitting on the toilet for most of you people. It's easy. I don't need to force it. Because if you force it, it's not worth it, mate, honestly. But yeah, I can't wait for September, man. Honestly, six weeks. I've been counting the days. I've been counting the months. I've been counting the weeks. I ain't even been having to worry about weight or anything. I'm in the best shape of my life, people. Please, please make sure you tune in to Wicked and Bad 4, September the 18th. Pay-per-view, people. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. For all the people who missed the last one, I know you was gutted. I know you was burning, you was fuming. You was thinking, oh, I should have watched that. I should have watched it. Most entertaining fight of the night. Most entertaining fight of the night. That's what everyone said. Everyone said that was the best fight of the night. It was the most entertaining. It was the most skilled, the most skilled being, being shown on the fight. So I'm looking forward to Wicked and Bad 4, man. I'm looking forward to being able to show the people what more I've got to show because I don't think I believe, I don't believe I gave everything that I had. I let the cameras, I thought the cameras weren't going to get to me. I thought the lights, I thought the noise wasn't going to get to me. But it all comes with experience, people, man. Every day, every day I'm going to get better. Every fight night, every fight out, every camp, it will get better and better and better. And inshallah, I will just improve. But for now, I'm not thinking about the future. I'm thinking about pro boxer. That's who I think about because I'm gonna mash your head in, bro. See your face, I'm gonna reconstruct it for you, bro. Your parents are not gonna know what you look like. They're not gonna recognize you at the end of that night. I'm telling you this for a fact, bro. You watch, bro, I'm telling you. This is not a joke, this is not a game out here. You may think I'm all, I'm all nice and soft and yeah, puppies and dogs and this, but bro, once, we put these, once I put this puppy down, bro, you don't wanna mess with me. You don't wanna catch these hands. Trust me, I don't know why you're coming back to me again, but I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. You got slapped up all them five rounds. I'm gonna slap you up for 10 now. I don't even, it doesn't, I can't even comprehend, it doesn't correlate in my head why you would wanna come back and try fight me. You're not on my league, bro. You're not on my level. You're not ready for me. I don't know whoever trains you, anybody can train you, bro. At the end of the day, it comes down to talent and skill and hard work, bro. You may have hard work, but you don't have the talent and the skill or the drive that I do, bro. But anyways, moving on to pro, man. We'll leave him to it. He knows he got slapped up. The whole what? The whole of London, the whole of UK knows he got, he got slapped up. But it is what it is, man. He's got his supporters. I've got my supporters. And yeah, we're gonna see on September, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm buzzing already every day, man. I swear, can't wait. Come here, Kira. Good girl.
You've been shy today, baby. You're tired. You're sleepy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Like I said, people, man, don't let this, don't let this picture here fool you. Trust me, you do not want to step in the ring with me, especially if you catch me on a bad day. If you catch me on a bad day, I will take everything out on you. And Pro Boxer, I've been storing and storing and storing so much of that, so much negativity and so much anger and so much drive. When I catch you on September, bro, you're gonna wish that you stayed in Dubai, fighting different people, fighting other fighters, not fighting me. You're gonna wish that you went back to white collar because guess what, bro? I'm gonna make sure you go nowhere. I'm gonna make sure that I'm here. This is my ring, bro. It's gonna be my ring. It's gonna be my building. They're gonna come to see me, not you. But that's, you can think what you wanna think. I know that you're gonna be thinking two different things. You're not gonna think what I think. I'm thinking that I'm gonna prosper. You're thinking that you're gonna prosper. That's okay, that's fine. Oh, loads of hair everywhere, man. It's a windy day, what can you do, man? What can you do? I should have braided this up, but it's okay. But yeah, man, I know that you're thinking you're gonna blow me out through the water and you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that. And just because you've been training and you've been running and you've been this, you think it's all gonna add up. You think one plus one equals two. But not in your life, bro. Trust me. You're gonna come on September the 18th and you're gonna realize that what you've done, you fucked up. People, man, I know you see me shrugging my head, bro, but it's just because I don't know why this guy honestly wants it with me again. I mean, I give him the respect, I give his team the respect that they want to come back, but I know you ain't coming back for blood. So what are you coming back for? What are you coming back for really? Because your team was happy with the draw. Your team started celebrating like, yeah, yeah, we got the draw, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, brother, when I get the draw, to me it's a loss. Even if I slapped you around the ring, and everyone knows it. Everyone watched me slap you around the ring, but it's okay, it's okay. God has a plan. God knows that when my time is, my time will come. So I'm not rushing things. I'm literally going day by day, training, working, waiting, and just praying to Allah that inshallah one day, all of this won't be for nothing. Ain't that right, baby chai? We're gonna snuff this guy. I'm gonna bring you as well, you can celebrate. Bring the whole fam along. But yeah, we wait man, September the 18th people. September the 18th. Akira, you don't live there. Akira. <laughs> Good work, brother. Good work, brother. As you can see, I don't know why, but I can't help myself from supporting people, even if I don't know you. Like that gentleman that just went past running. Like, I've got so much, like, love and sort of like support and guidance for people who have been in the same journey as I have, who have tried to lose weight, who have tried to battle, let's say eating disorders and obesity and everything like that. I just, I love seeing people work on themselves and trying to better themselves. It makes me want to better myself even more because I know that for a fact, I know that when I used to train, I used to be a big tubby fuck. Everyone used to look at me and be like, rah, this guy's huge, this guy's big. And one day I just had to, I just woke up and I thought, I can't do this no more. I can't do this no more. Like, I looked at myself in the mirror and I don't know, I just saw something completely different to what I used to see. And I had to change. So, and that whole journey has just taught me that you cannot do this alone. It's better when you have support, friends, family, helping you, like coaches, etc. everything. Everything, even, even a little good work. You've done good today. It goes a long way for a lot of people who really struggle to lose their weight. So I don't know why I can't, I, I love it. It gives me so much, it gives me so much happiness when I get to see someone, even if I don't know you, if I can tell you good job or well done or keep going, just a little bit of motivation goes a long way for a lot of people in this world and not that many people realize. You can be the smallest shoulder to lean on when someone may need you the most and it may be the world to them. But at the same time, you may not think it of yourself, but the other party is thinking, wow, this person has done so much for me. But yet, 
all I've done is possibly just giving you a, com a compliment or, or like an encouraging comment, like not to give up and stuff. So that's why I like to see people working on themselves and I like to push people because I know that <clears throat> you, it's very hard sometimes for you to push yourself, for you to find your own motivation, your own strive. But it's a lot easier when people are around you supporting you. When you have a, when you have a team of people that care about you and they're pushing you, they, they're only doing it for your benefit. And you know they're there for your benefit. So you don't want to let anyone down. So when people are there for you, make sure people you put in the extra work because that's what it's about it's about people uniting together supporting each other one another when anyone is down and out when anyone is low on their lowest days you can always find someone people trust me and i'll tell you this from first-hand experience i won't go into detail to it too much but i know that when you need a couple people there or even just that one person when they're there for you it feels like it feels you feel unstoppable you feel like nothing can break you because that one person will feel like an army to you but that's for me depending on everyone else i'm not too sure but i know when i have one solid motiv motivator in my life regardless of who it may be whether it may be my mum whether it may be my little brother whether it may be, whether it may be my coach or my team like my, my team or anything like that i know that it's only right for me to give 110% because if I'm not giving 110%, 110% what am I really doing this for? Like why am I here? Like, like there, there needs to be, you need to have purpose in everything you do in life and if you don't have purpose in life it's very hard to get where you want to get to people so just make sure you stay close, you stay united and boom, Kalas Karim, that's your boy, September the 18th Wicked and bad, you're gonna find me soon. Bow.